It's an honor to give a lecture in, uh, in this hall. Uh, this is the biggest audience, I, but, uh, except for the uh, general physics class. Uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Kim told me that uh, I'm not supposed to give you prop, uh, exercise problems or homeworks, just the uh, uh, entertaining talks. And uh, I actually, I made a documentary film uh, to cover this, uh, but it is in Korean. So since there are many foreigners, I have to uh, give it as a lecture. And uh, uh, this lecture material uh, is covered in my astronomy course uh, in six to eight weeks. It, con it is condensed to one hour. So if you understand, I think you are a genius. Uh, if you don't understand, it is quite uh, ordinary, so don't be discouraged. And uh, uh, each subject is not uh, difficult, but there are many different ideas. That's why uh, it is difficult uh, to follow. If some of you are physicists, you will be uh, uh, familiar with some uh, subjects already, then it will be easy, but uh, for others, Every subject will be new. Uh, so don't be too uh, discouraged that uh, you don't understand too many things. OK. Uh, so mainly, I'll be talking about the evolution of star. And the, during the evolution, uh, many elements are uh, synthesized. And uh, uh, at the end, iron will come out. Iron doesn't come out uh, ordinarily. Uh, it comes out in a very uh, dramatic way. Okay, and, uh, it, it, it is a very interesting story. So how are you? Oh. Okay. Uh, there are over uh, 100 elements in the periodic ta table. This is a very good one. And uh, uh, you will be f you are very familiar with this one. Uh, yeah, I number twenty six iron. Uh, and iron is a very uh, unique element, as you will see later. Very st stable uh, in nu uh, nuclear way, and there are. Uh, hydrogen, helium, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and a lot of other things. And uh, it doesn't go uh, beyond this. There are some more elements. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of elements. But at the beginning of the universe, there was, there was only one element, hydrogen. And uh, there was no iron, no carbon in the entire universe. There was only hydrogen. Uh, and how did all these elements come out? They were cooked in stars. And the cooking uh, is not trivial. It, uh, each of them uh, came out in different way. And uh, how do we know that uh, they we know that they are in, on Earth. And uh, how do we know that they are in the universe? And how, how much of them are uh, in the universe? I'll tell you later. Uh, this is the uh, elements uh, in our body. So a lot of oxygen and ca carbon and some hydrogen. And a, a very little hydrogen. So in a de democratic way, you can live without iron. You will all suffocate, right? You need iron to breathe. So even even very minor amount, it is essential. Actually, all these elements are essential. Uh, if you are, uh, lack of some elements, you'll be in very serious uh, uh, sickness. And uh, uh, here is the, some numbers. Uh, composition of crusts, earth crusts, a lot of oxygen, 
silicon uh, and the iron is number four. And uh, in the whole world, iron is number one. Thirty-five percent of Earth is made of iron, and a lot of oxygen. And uh, uh, how do we know that? Uh, this is the schematic diagram of Earth. Uh, there is the a mantle and the crust. There is a liquid uh, layer, molten molten iron, and there is a solid iron. And uh, uh, take out this picture by analyzing uh, seismic wa waves. And also, uh, that is not enough. Uh, they do st study theoretically. They know the, uh, how uh, big is the Earth and how ha heavy it is. And uh, they know that uh, with uh, silicones, they cannot uh, make Earth as heavy. They need something very heavy. So uh, considering a lot of things, and also they simulate uh, with computer, and they came out uh, this picture. Now it is they believe that, that this picture is correct. So uh, there's a lot of iron, but you cannot dig it out. Digging out uh, costs mu uh, much. And uh, here is a solar system of abundance. 75% uh, is hydrogen, and helium is 23, and the remaining 2% is shared by all these elements. And the iron is number six. So iron is very abundant in, in the universe. So these are, uh, uh, these are uh, ga uh, gas, and the carbon is everywhere. Uh, but iron, uh, why, why so, many, so much iron? As I said, iron is very stable uh, in nuclear way. And uh, the way uh, they got that uh, number is by analyzing uh, spectroscopy. Uh, astronomers, uh, they, all they can do is that they uh, receive the uh, light, starlight, and then analyze starlight. And uh, the only way they can analyze is the, uh, to uh, expand its spectrum by letting it pass through a bunch of prism or spectroscope. And then uh, this light, uh, starlight, uh, will be showing some uh, these spectral lines. And uh, each element, each atomic element, has a, uh, this very uh, unique signatures. So if we uh, see this, uh, we know that there is ca uh, cadmium or neon uh, in that uh, uh, star. And uh, usually the way they do is this. Here is a uh, star, and in between there are uh, gases. When the star passes through some gases, this gas absorbs uh, some line, uh, lines, uh, some lights of some particular wavelengths, uh, and uh, uh, that way we know that uh, there is certain elements. For example, if uh, this dark line uh, looks like a hydrogen spectrum, then we know that this is hydrogen. So, uh, and uh, by analyzing the uh, thickness of this line and uh, uh, the width of this line, they can uh, tell a lot of things. How strong, uh, how much uh, uh, the elements are there. And uh, uh, an experiment, experienced engineer can tell the iron temperature by just uh, looking, looking at this color. So when you heat iron, it changes from brown red to very white color. So if uh, an object is heated, it, uh, the object changes its color. And the uh, same is true for uh, stars. Uh, stars has different uh, surface temperature depending on the uh, mass. 
massive stars has a uh, very high temperature, and the uh, uh, light stars has a low uh, temperature. And this is a famous diagram. It's called the HR diagram. It's uh, uh, named after uh, Herschel Sprung and Russell, two famous astronomers. And actually, it is a this uh, axis is temperature. This is uh, luminosity. How bright it is! It is, and the temperature scale is in reverse. Uh, it is higher temperature is high uh, this way and the low this way. Uh, but the uh, luminosity this is brighter this way. And the uh, uh, many star many so they observe the uh, starlight. And they, uh, and then they plot in this uh, diagram, and the many stars lie on this uh, diagonal. And there is some relationship. For example, our sun. Oh, here is the sun. Our sun is here. Sun is not completely white. It is a little yellowish, yellowish white. Uh, and there are some. Uh, Vega is uh, 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 in Korean Jingyeosang. Uh, uh, Vega and Sirius, they are a little uh, bluer, and some very large uh, star. Uh, this is Pika. It is very blue, and uh, uh, this is a massive star. It is Spica is uh, uh, 10 times uh, the sun. And the Vega, Vega is about three times the sun. And there are some uh, light stars. And they are very red. And here is the uh, region. Uh, for example, the regal in uh, Orion uh, constellation. Surface temperature is uh, something like 20,000 degrees. And the sun is about uh, 6,370 degrees. And the petal juice is uh, in the th uh, around 3,000. And this is very important. Uh, t telling the, uh, knowing the uh, uh, temperature of the star. And also they can tell how big uh, is that star just by analyzing uh, spect uh, spectrum. They measure the width of some spectral line, and the, uh, that tells the size of the uh, star. And uh, it is, this is more detailed analysis. Uh, and on us, they uh, theoretically compute at certain temperature which uh, elements are active. Uh, by checking theoretically, they can tell uh, what lines what spectral lines will be active at certain temperatures. So that's how uh, astronomers uh, measure the uh, temperature of a uh, star. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, some entertaining subject. So let's go back uh, to ancient times. Uh, how and uh, check out how the uh, Earth's atmosphere here, uh, evolved. At the beginning, uh, they believe that uh, Earth is uh, about four and a half billion years old. That time, uh, Earth there were no oxygen. Uh, lot of, uh, mainly nitrogen and a lot of uh, uh, water and carbon dioxide and a minor amount of neon and helium. Uh, in this environment, no living organism can survive. But at about three and a half billion years ago, uh, oxygen start to build up and then uh, increase gradually. Uh, and uh, uh, we now have a current uh, atmospheric system. And uh, this oxygen uh, story of oxygen has something to do with iron also. So in the beginning, 
iron was dissolved in ocean water. There was no oxygen at all, so iron could not be oxidized. So pure iron was dissolved in ocean in uh, abundant am amounts. They came out of a uh, volcano, uh, as we saw in the uh, uh, abundance gra graph. There are ions, uh, pretty much iron in throughout the universe. Uh, but then there are some living organisms. It's called a stroma, uh, stromatolites. And this bacteria is a, uh, they uh, started to produce oxygen by, they were doing photosynthesis. And uh, uh, so in seawater, there were plenty of oxygen and the uh, ions uh, could uh, oxidize. So oxidized ions, they sunk to the bottom of ocean and they uh, formed the banded, uh, banded ion formation. And uh, the, these formed the iron, uh, iron mines, iron ores. They, uh, actually, they dig out uh, this uh, uh, ancient uh, iron oxide. And then these stromatolites, they, uh, they used up, oxidize all the iron in the ocean, and they were still producing oxygen. So ocean could not hold uh, more. Ocean was saturated with oxygen, and that, uh, this uh, overproduced oxygen now escaped to atmosphere. And then this atmospheric oxygen oxidized some iron on uh, inland. So you see some oxidized uh, ions. Uh, and you see a uh, lot of them in uh, Utah, in America. And uh, there are many beautiful sceneries there. OK. Uh, cyan uh, cyanobacteria, uh, they, uh, stro stromatolites, uh, is a colony of uh, uh, cyanobacteria. They produce uh, chlorophyll, and uh, that is essential for photosynthesis. And they came out, first uh, cyanobacteria came out about three and a half billion years ago. And they are still uh, in, on Earth. Uh, you can find them in Austra Australia, in uh, Western o Australia. You see uh, this colony of stromatolites. They look like this. This is more realistic. And they did very important things. They produced oxygen, and also they got rid of uh, carbon dioxide from atmosphere. They photosynthesized, and when they died, they sunk to the bottom of the ocean. So they removed uh, carbon from the atmosphere. So they were very important in forming uh, current atmosphere. And uh, uh, yeah, this banded ion f formation uh, uh, looks something like this. And uh, they uh, form this kind of a uh, layer. Uh, this lighter bands uh, is called the church, and it's mainly uh, Fe2O3. And the dark ones is FeO. So when there are uh, more oxygen, uh, uh, when the uh, bacteria produce more oxygen, you see uh, more Fe. Two O3, and there are less oxygen. You see FeO. And here are some anoa. I think you know more than this. Uh, okay. And uh, you see the uh, oxi uh, iron o oxidized iron on Earth. Uh, I uh, recommend you to visit to do a field trip to Utah some, uh, someday. It is very entertaining. Uh, 
So uh, Utah's national parks is a paradise of iron oxides. So iron likes to be oxidized very uh, chemically. Uh, iron is easily attacked by oxygen. And uh, it is a nuisance for us. Uh, but uh, sometimes they do some beautiful jobs. So you see uh, very beautiful landscapes. Uh, this is uh, Australia. And this is uh, some state park, state park uh, near Las Vegas. And this is Bryce Canyon in Utah. And this is Grand Canyon. They all uh, contain iron oxides. You know, a uh, very experienced chef uh, can make a very uh, tasty uh, pasta, but uh, some poor uh, chef make uh, uh, sujebi. So, uh, but in Utah, they, uh, the iron oxides came, came out very uh, artistic, artistically. And uh, let me briefly give you a survey. Here is Las Vegas, and Grand Canyon is along uh, this, uh, along this Colorado River. And uh, here is Zion Canyon, Bryce Canyon, Capital Reef, Canyonland Arches. And here is uh, Monument Valley. And the uh, uh, most beautiful one is Canyonland. And uh, uh, from Las Vegas, it takes whole day. So uh, most people visit uh, Zion and Bryce Canyon, and uh, they think that they saw all of it. But uh, it's only a uh, minor part of it. And uh, the most beautiful one is here. And so you have to pay price. Uh, give at least two days. And uh, this entire, uh, entire area, it is a, it's a high plateau. The land is uplifted and then carved. So uh, it looks like this. So land is uh, this uh, sedimentary rock uh, layers are low uplifted and carved. And the uh, highest one is Bryce Canyon. And uh, it is uh, because it is cold, uh, they are covered with snow. Uh, 200 days a year, since it is very high, over uh, 2,500 meters. So uh, this erosion is more, most dramatic. And uh, as you go down further, uh, you will see some Grand Canyons and uh, other stops. It's called the Grand Staircase. And Monument Valley is also here. So here's some sample of Zion Canyon. And there is a very narrow, can deep and narrow canyon. It's, they call it Slot Canyon. And the Escalante National Monument. Uh, they call this Hoodoo. Uh, it looks like a, a, a mushroom. A lot of Hoodoos. And the Escalante National Monument is very beautiful. And Capital Reef. And arches. Double arches. And the Canyonland. Uh, there is a po uh, viewpoint called the Grand Viewpoint. If you go there, you see this kind of scenery. Uh, in the distance, you see snow-covered mountains. And uh, right in front of you, you see these pillows of uh, 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 re uh, red rocks. And it's covered with white uh, top. It, it looks like a flower. And there is also in the s same park, there is a region called uh, uh, needles. And the, these rocks uh, at a distance it looks like needles. And Monument Valley, and uh, Lake Powell. It is that just before uh, Grand Canyon, there is a dam, 
and then uh, holes makes a, a lake. And near that area, there is a slot canyon called the Antelope Canyon. And this is the uh, highlight of this area. Uh, it's called the waves. It is so precious that uh, they allow only 20 visitors per day. And uh, you have to apply for, uh, out of 20, 10, uh, they dissipate in, in the morning. So you go there uh, two days before and set a camp there, uh, and then you get the, uh, your turn. And for the, uh, uh, the other 10, you apply two, uh, two months befo uh, before. As soon as they open, within 30 seconds, it's all gone. And uh, uh, so for us, it is impo impossible. For foreigners, I tried many times. And uh, <laughs> try is not free. You have to pay something like $5. <laughs> and I lost something like $20. And after that, I gave up. So, but uh, in Zion Canyon, you see part of this. It is in the uh, Grand Staircase, this er area. So iron smelting, you know all this. So I'll just quickly flip. And the smelting of iron is basically uh, detaching ox uh, oxygen from iron ore, I uh, iron oxide. So you start from here, uh, detach some of it, and then make Fe34, and then FeO, and then uh, Fe. Uh, you can do without uh, carbon monoxide, but then you have to raise the temperature very high, which is very costly. So providing carbon monoxide is much cheaper. That's why they, uh, why they do. Okay, now uh, in smelting furnace, heated carbon, mo uh, carbon monoxide gas is fed into iron oxide to rip up oxygen. So basically, uh, you uh, take up this oxygen from iron oxide. This separation energy, uh, it is in the form of heat. It is provided chemically, uh, so coal provides that energy. And the chemical energy is appropriate to maintain uh, this uh, temperature for this uh, reaction. Uh, it is not terribly expensive. <coughs> but in the universe, <coughs> iron is, uh, this iron, pure iron, is uh, synthesized from silicon in nuclear reactions. And uh, this nuclear synthesizing energy is more than a million times chemical energy. Uh, actually, for iron, it's much more. Uh, and, uh, uh, and also, it, it requires very high temperature. The simplest uh, nuclear fusion, which is hydrogen fusion, two, uh, four hydrogen makes one helium, that requires 15 million degrees. Uh, and the silicon fusion to make iron, uh, it, it takes 3 billion degrees. You, can, you cannot make this kind of high uh, temperatures on Earth. Uh, in the uh, 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 nuclear fusion laboratories, they fuse hydrogen, but not uh, uh, pure hy hydrogen. They uh, use deuterium and uh, tritium, deuterium and tritium, which is easier to fuse. Uh, but still, to uh, uh, reach this temperature, steadily, is not easy. They uh, spend more energy than that they get. So uh, still, they need to study, uh, do a lot of research. Now, hydrogen f fusion requires high temperature and pressure, not for one hour, not for a month, for billion years. And uh, to maintain that kind of environment chemically, you will be bankrupt, maybe 
after a year, uh, nobody will invest you. They will ask you uh, your mon uh, their money back. But in the universe, there is an environment which uh, is provided naturally without uh, any cost. So chemical reaction is inappropriate from nuclear fusion. In stars, such environment is uh, maintained naturally. You don't have to do anything. Uh, it is maintained. And uh, uh, the uh, driving force for that is the uh, gravitational contraction of a massive star and a, a mass of uh, gas, when they uh, get together, they, at certain uh, points, they begin to contract. Once they uh, uh, start contraction, then the temperature goes up and the pressure uh, builds up. And then the nuclear reaction is ignited uh, automatically. And then uh, the star cooks up all kinds of elements. And we'll go uh, through this exciting uh, story. Now, it's, uh, uh, now let's compare some of these. So this is chemical reaction. This is nuclear fusion. So chemical reaction, uh, carbon burning uh, procedure. And this is fusion. Uh, Deuterium and tritium makes uh, one helium and uh, uh, spit out uh, one neutron. And uh, typical operation temperature is 700 Kelvin, 10 to the 8 Kelvin. That means 10 million degrees. And uh, by the way, the uh, uh, atomic plant, which uses fission, is main, uh, operates at uh, thousand degrees. So if accident happens, uh, things start to melt. So it is a very uh, a dangerous situation. And the energy, energy release per kilogram of fuel, it is as ergo per gram, it is 10 to the 11, and it is 10 to the 18. So seven orders of magnet difference. So this is much more uh, efficient, but uh, that can only be done in stars, not on Earth yet. So modern alchemy is a nuclear astrophysics, uh, and the nuclear astrophysics uh, was started by these four people. Uh, they call BBH. Margaret Burbage, George Burbage, uh, Fowler, and Hoyle. So uh, uh, with their initials, P, B, uh, F, H. And they are the founders of uh, nuclear astrophysics. Uh, they did that by writing a famous uh, review article on the synthesis of elements in stars. And they classified or nuclear uh, reactions uh, in this uh, diagram. It's a very famous uh, paper. And this studied nuclear astro astro astrophysics for the next 50 years. Uh, one should write a paper like this. But uh, it is very rare. <laughs> and uh, uh, mainly hydrogen burning and helium burning and uh, alpha capture. Once you make elements, you put add alpha means helium, helium nuclei. So by adding helium, you uh, make heavier elements. So here are some neon to magnesium, uh, magnesium to uh, very silicon. Uh, there is uh, here they showed only the essential ones. Anyhow, uh, there are mainly three uh, processes. And uh, this was studied in a laboratory at Caltech called the Kellogg Radiation Laboratory. You know, you are familiar with the name Kellogg. You eat Kellogg every day. The same Kellogg. 
and uh, the brother of the uh, CEO Kellogg, he wanted to show up himself. So he uh, offered money to Caltech to build the uh, X-ray uh, laboratory, and purpose was, was to use X-ray to cure human disease. So they were happy. X-ray was the most advanced machine at the time. But then, in the evening, there are no patients. The machine was still there. So they asked, that, uh, could we use this for physics experiment? Uh, uh, since it didn't conflict uh, with the uh, original purpose, they said, OK. And then the evening activities became more dominant. And then uh, uh, later, they moved the uh, uh, clinic to other place. And uh, they, uh, this place became an X-ray laboratory, and actually nuclear uh, astrophysics laboratory. And uh, it is uh, in this building. This is Caltech. Uh, it, uh, it is a very beautiful picture. And Caltech maintains this garden uh, very well. There are flowers uh, all throughout the year. And uh, you see, uh, this is some uh, day in May. And the Caltech gardening uh, is done by one of the uh, uh, members in the Board of Trustees. In the United States, Board of Trustee members, uh, they donate. They are main dona donators to the school. And one of the uh, members was a uh, garden industrialist. He made money by gardening. And he did a great job and, uh, out of his own pocket. So it is very good to have uh, such a uh, uh, Board of Trustee mem member. So uh, yeah, in 19, when I uh, was making documentary, I interviewed uh, some people, some important astrophysicists, and this is Burbage, uh, the male, male Burbage. The, the two Burbages are uh, husband and wife. <coughs> and he died uh, uh, later. Oh, this is wrong, uh, 2008. Uh, 2008. He died in 2009, uh, one, one year later. And he was very uh, uh, friendly. And uh, he's, uh, called, uh, his name is Wagona. He's in Stanford. <coughs> and uh, he uh, explained uh, in the uh, Big Bang, uh, only helium was produced and no other elements. And uh, uh, let me give you the story briefly. At Big Bang, there are uh, protons, neutrons, electrons, and neutrinos. No carbons, no ions. Only very element pa elementary particles. It was too hot. Uh, they could not combine because the temperature was too hot. As the universe expanded, the temperature dropped, and the uh, neutrons began to decay. Uh, when the temperature was very high, neutron decayed, but uh, they came back, they were uh, uh, made again. But uh, when the temperature dropped, uh, they decayed only, and they were not made uh, again. And uh, so there is a massacre of neutrons. And uh, it, was a, uh, it seemed like the, all the neutrons were going to disappear. But as the temperature dropped certain, below a certain uh, degree, neutrons uh, began, began to pair with protons, and they made the deuteriums. Once neutron is uh, within deuterium, they no longer decay. They, are, they stay there very stably. And that, uh, as the temperature dropped further, deuteriums, uh, they paired also to form heliums. It's a little more complicated reaction, but uh, uh, brief, uh, in short, it's two deuteriums make a, uh, one helium. And within three minutes of after Big Bang, uh, uh, 
practically element production was completed. And after that, uh, there were 75% of in by weight uh, hydrogen and 23% were helium and the remaining uh, percentage were distributed uh, to other elements. And the temperatures was billion degrees. And uh, uh, so universe expanded on and on and uh, after uh, 380,000 years, all lights are ex extinguished. When the temperature reached to 3,000, the entire universe uh, went complete dark. And uh, it stayed dark for 300 million years. Can you imagine without seeing any light sitting there for 300 million years? But the universe has all the time. Uh, they can wait. Uh, if you do a wedding came, they, can, they always win. So as the universe expanded, temperature dropped on and on. And after 300 million years, stars are born. They, are, uh, they began to appear around dark matter clumps. And the universe is lit again. Throughout the entire universe, uh, lights appear. And then when the stars form, they don't form uh, alone. They form in billions, the entire uh, uh, universe. And actually, in my documentary, there is a very striking computer simulation exhibiting that. But it is in Korean. I think uh, you should learn the Korean language, you know. You can understand the, uh, this uh, Gangnam style much better <laughs> if you want to know uh, Korean language. And the temperature was minus, uh, oh, minus 223 uh, centigrade, not Kelvin. Sorry. Uh, and the gravitational contraction causes formation of stars and galaxies, and a stable environment for synth uh, nuclear synthesis was formed. And the uh, atomic nucleus is made of protons and nu neutrons. Neutrons can decay into proton, electron, and antineutrinos. The simplest nuclear fusion, two protons meet and make one neutron, and they spit out a positron and neutrino. Uh, and uh, it is not free. Uh, there are some barriers. Number one barrier, they are like uh, charges. Because they repair each other. Uh, but if you raise the temperature, then they can overcome this repulsion. Uh, and the barrier number two, this is more serious. Uh, when uh, one of the proton was uh, transformed to neutron and spit out neutrinos, and this involves weak interaction. And the weak interaction uh, is very slow process. So it takes long, long, long hours. How many hours? One billion years. Can you wait billion years? No. But uh, if you have a billion particles, you wait only one year, right? So by having a large number, uh, you can see it in uh, a tolerable amount of time, you can see it happening. So the solution is maintain a high temperature and high density and wait forever. And inside the star, such environment is formed. And uh, this is a diagrammatic view. And two proton meet, it takes a billion years to make neutron. And neutron and uh, uh, hydrogen makes and uh, becomes uh, helium-3. It takes only one second. It doesn't produce neutron, neutrino. Is purely electromagnetic, uh, I mean, uh, nuclear reaction. But then two uh, helium-3 uh, meet, uh, make uh, helium-4 and uh, spit out two protons. It takes million years because uh, repulsion is stronger. So they call this uh, PP chain. It, it is happening in, uh, in the sun. 
and uh, uh, triple alpha. So the uh, sun produces helium, and uh, uh, if there are a lot of helium, then uh, uh, it can produce carbon. By adding two helium meats, they make uh, then becomes beryllium, and you if you add uh, one beryllium, becomes carbon, and if you add one uh, uh, helium, it becomes oxygen. So it sounds very simple. The problem is when this uh, reaction takes place, the temperature has to be high, and at that high temperature, beryllium is very unstable. As soon as it's formed, it uh, di dissolves. Uh, so, you, before you add uh, helium, it disappears. So, it, uh, you should add it uh, very quickly. Uh, and then, once you do that, it becomes carbon. And uh, once carbon is uh, produced, it is very easy to make oxygen. So uh, uh, you have to worry that uh, there will be no carbon left over. All, all the, uh, this uh, helium will be consumed consume to make oxygen. We need carbon to have uh, living uh, things. And how they did they do that? Uh, they, uh, at the Kellogg laboratory, uh, three people met together and uh, they uh, solved this puzzle. And uh, so in this environment, uh, since there are many helium, uh, the third one can be attached, and then it can stay there. And there is a, a special state of carbon where the carbon will stay long, and it does not become oxygen. And uh, this carbon uh, becomes pure carbon. Uh, it's a bit complicated story, but uh, uh, so I will skip uh, a detailed story. And uh, you could win a Nobel Prize. But uh, actually, this idea was, idea was uh, proposed by Hoyle, one of the, uh, uh, the founders. And uh, he emphasized to experimentalists, you have to, uh, it has to be like this. And uh, he, he emphasized to young assistant professors, experimentalists. And uh, one of them uh, took it seriously and actually he produced this carbon. Uh, so uh, they should have given a Nobel Prize, but uh, they, did, they didn't and uh, only they gave one to Fowler. And the, the uh, Hoyle should have given uh, a prize. Uh, so I asked them, uh, uh, why he didn't receive, and uh, he, they said that uh, uh, everybody knew that, uh, that there must be special carbon. Since it, is, it was obvious, nobody spoke out. So, but only Hoyle spoke out uh, loudly. Th that was one thing. Another thing is that uh, Hoyle uh, said that, uh, correct states, uh, made correct statements but he also made a wrong statements many, many times. And he was more famous for wrong statements. So he didn't believe in uh, expanding universe. He believed in static universe. So he lost c credit. So when you say things, you have to be careful which one will be uh, advantageous for you and wh which one will, uh, uh, will be disadvantageous. But anyhow, no, uh, he didn't receive. Stellar evolution and the nuclear synthesis. So, star is formed when there is a, a, a gas clouds. Uh, this small uh, dot is bigger than sun. So, you know how big this, these are. This is famous picture uh, filmed by a Hubble Space Tel Telescope. It's called the Eagle uh, Nebula. So when the gas, uh, huge amount of gas uh, cloud of mass uh, heavier than 
8% of solar mass, M uh, size, this is solar mass. Then, uh, and then if the gas cloud condenses around dark matter clumps, gravitational contraction uh, creates a high temperature and density environment, and it can ignite nuclear fusion, PP chain, hydrogen fusion reaction, but it has to have uh, enough mass. Uh, for example, our Jupiter uh, is made of uh, hydrogen, but it is uh, one thousandth of sol sun, so it cannot uh, ignite nuclear reaction. So in the HR diagram, it starts from here and it moves to this di diagonal. And it stays here for a long, long time. They call this main sequence. That means uh, it does hydrogen fusion. So stars spend most of their time in fusing hydrogen. And once they exhaust hydrogen fuel, they, they start to move up the, this main uh, diagonal and uh, make a uh, trace this kind of curve. They become subgiant, red giant, and contracts again, and they become supergiant. Uh, in this stage, in the red giant stage, uh, the star burns helium to make uh, carbon, carbon and oxygen. And when in, uh, in the super red giant uh, stage, it produces magnesium and silicon. Uh, and if the star is heavier, heavy enough, then it can produce iron. So, uh, story. Uh, so, how much time? Do I have 15 minutes? Not sure. Huh? Yeah. Oh, so. I'm only halfway, so probably in the, in the four we'll have the gravitational construction uh, creates high temperature and density environments and it ignites nuclear reaction. And the high temperature gas pressure, uh, since it is hot, uh, it stops gra uh, further gravitational, uh, gravitational construction. So gas pressure and the gravitational construction they are in uh, maintain equilibrium. The star stays in that state for many, many years until it uh, consumes all the fuel. When the star uh, uh, exhausts nuclear fuel, and then uh, it no longer produces enough heat, so the gas contracts again, uh, and then it reaches uh, still higher temperature, and then it starts another nuclear reaction, like a helium burning uh, reaction. And then uh, this game is repeated again. So stars repeat this game again and again. And main sequence stars is a hydrogen fusion stage. And red ion star, uh, it's a helium fusion stage. Uh, I'll skip this. OK. Uh, red giants, the helium, uh, helium uh, sinks to the center. It is heavier than hydrogen. Uh, it's a kind of ash. And the uh, outside uh, hydrogen burning shell. Uh, and the, uh, uh, since I don't have much time, I'll skip. The light star and the massive star, they have a different journey. Uh, massive star becomes supernova. Of, uh, and the uh, threshold mass for nuclear reaction, 8% uh, of solar mass, they can only burn hydrogen. They cannot burn helium. To burn helium, you have to have at least 45% of uh, solar mass. And to burn uh, carbon, you need 7.2 uh, solar mass. And uh, I skip. So uh, this is a series of uh, nuclear reaction. Carbon burning occurs at uh, uh, 60 million degrees. Neon burning 
1.2 billion uh, degrees, oxygen burning 1.5 degrees, silicon burning 3 billion uh, degrees. Uh, and uh, uh, when silicon burns, it, it produces iron, so iron is sunk to the center. And at this stage, stars can no longer produce energy by nuclear fission because iron is very stable. Iron does not burn. These things, these elements burn and they produce uh, energy. But the iron does not produce uh, positive energy. So you have to uh, put energy to uh, make. I'm sorry, sorry. I should. So uh, you can, this is the uh, famous diagram, is a nuclear binding energy diagram. And the iron uh, has the uh, highest binding energy. So it can uh, do fission or it can be, uh, this can be fused to become iron. This can uh, decay into iron. So iron is more stable. So uh, you cannot uh, produce energy. Uh, so, so, uh, so after this series of nuclear reaction, uh, at certain point it reaches a point where there is no more nuclear reactions. Then what? There is still gravitational contraction. Uh, how the star re resists that uh, contraction? Uh, that is done by degenerate pressure. Uh, and the, this is a very important concept, but the word is horrible. As soon as uh, uh, they see this word, they become dizzy. But actually, it's not uh, terrible. It, uh, it is a quantum mechanical repulsive force between like particles. Like, uh, for example, two electrons. Uh, electrons, uh, they repel each other because they have uh, like charges. But uh, they have uh, another kind of repulsion. Uh, in the uh, single location, there can be only two electrons. You cannot put, put three electrons in the single location. Uh, it is a quantum mechanical uh, phenomenon. So if you want to put more electrons, you have to find the other, other locations. And uh, when the star is uh, com uh, compressed extremely, then the uh, electrons are forced to uh, occupy the same location, and they don't want, so they exert repulsion. This repulsive force is much stronger than electro-electric uh, repulsion, and that's what uh, prevents stars from uh, collapsing gravitationally. But this is... Uh, Finite. It, 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 it's not infinite uh, force. So if the star is uh, big enough, then the gravitational contraction can uh, dominate this uh, degenerate pressure and then star collapse. And when the st star collapse, oh, here's the uh, summary of this. Uh, so white drop is the star, suddenly it will become white drop. It is holding up uh, by electron degeneracy. Neutron star is holding up by neutron degeneracy. When the star uh, is uh, heavier than this one, then this one, uh, this pressure cannot hold up. It collapses. Uh, then what? Uh, then this iron, uh, see? Iron is very strong, you, you all know that, but uh, in the s center of the iron, it is much strong, much more strong. And this iron is holding up by degenerate pressure. Iron atoms are touching each other. And the, if the, uh, there are uh, enough iron, more than 1.0 times uh, solar mass, then uh, iron degenerate pressure cannot hold up 
so it be begins to collapse. And uh, gravitational collection uh, creates there is a uh, summary. It is a very so. Uh, let me explain only uh, this this slide. Uh, when the it co uh, contracts, temperature rises up, and the high temperature creates gamma ray, very very powerful gamma ray, and this gamma ray is so powerful that uh, it destroys iron into helium. Star spends its entire life to produce iron. Now it is uh, dismantling everything. It's, it's, it's a kind of uh, uh, silly, but uh, uh, if you know a little bit of Buddhism, uh, I mean the, uh, this Buddhism God does that every day. In the morning it creates, in the, in the evening it uh, burns everything. Uh, so, uh, iron is uh, uh, dis uh, disintegrated into helium, and then uh, helium, the camera is, uh, doesn't leave helium alone. It also disintegrates helium into proton and neutron. And then, since pressure is so high that the uh, electron uh, there is no more uh, deterrent pressure. Uh, so electrons are uh, compressed so, so much that uh, it fuses into fuse with uh, proton and becomes neutron. So only neutrons are remaining. And neutron deterrent pressure is much higher than electron deterrent pressure. So it holds up. So uh, your neutron star is cr created. Star made of neutrons, and uh, it collapses when the uh, sun becomes a white dwarf. It, be it shrunk to a size like a Earth, and when it becomes a uh, sun, uh, can never become neutron star. But uh, if it does, it shrinks uh, to a small city like a Pohang. So uh, it is very very condensed, and in that process. Uh, star becomes supernova. It uh, collapses gravitationally and uh, uh, it uh, shock wave uh, rebounds and uh, puts out some uh, leftover envelope materials into space. So uh, you see a supernova shining and uh, uh, this it is called a type 2 supernova. The heavy star, when it collapses, when it is heavier, heavier than eight times solar mass, when it collapses, uh, it, uh, uh, it uh, explodes, and uh, it produces a lot of iron. And uh, uh, what it does is that uh, when it collapses, uh, it a lot of energy is created, and then 99.99 percent of energy is taken away by neutrinos. Neutrino is massless particle, and the neutrinos are dispersed throughout the uh, space. It's like nothing. Uh, but uh, that's what the star does. It works throughout the uh, entire life. It makes all kinds of elements, and then in the last moment, produces neutrinos. And when the neutrinos uh, goes out, on the way out, it creates a lot of heavy elements. About half of the elements are, heavy elements are made in that moment, which is shorter than one second. And the iron is also made in this dramatic, uh, I mean, speed out. And the more dramatic uh, supernova is type one. A medium star ends life as a carbon oxygen white dwarf. And it does nothing, but if it has a companion, and when the, uh, its companion uh, becomes a red giant, it can absorb uh, some uh, materials, and the one uh, this white drop becomes fatter than, uh, goes uh, heavier than 1.4 uh, 
solar mass, and then it becomes unstable, and it uh, starts to uh, collapse, and uh, uh, the uh, star collapses gradually uh, about for about thousand years, and the thermonuclear reaction takes place throughout the entire uh, star, and uh, and uh, after thousand years it explodes as a superstar, a supernova, in less than a second. In that short time, iron is produced. And this type 1 supernova uh, produces a lot of iron. About 60% of uh, its mass is produced, uh, becomes iron. And moreover, uh, it is explodes, it explodes completely. It doesn't leave anything in the center. Everything is spit out throughout the uh, universe. So it is a very uh, efficient iron maker. So iron is made in this dramatic event in a very split second. And the uh, supernova is shown uh, in this moment. moment. Uh, let me see, yeah. So this is the light curve of supernova. And, uh, when the, uh, in, uh, initially, iron is not produced immediately. First, uh, nickel is produced, and then cobalt, and then iron. Uh, in this process, uh, light comes out, and uh, that's the light uh, we see from supernova. So when you see a supernova, you see, uh, that is the uh, 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 in that moment, iron is uh, produced, actually. So I guess I ran out of time. So, uh, and actually, uh, type two supernova was observed in 1987, February 23rd. So it was like this before supernova, and then after. So how many years? About uh, 20 years the exploding gas reached the uh, outer rings and uh, made uh, these fireworks. So actually, uh, it agrees with theoretical predictions and the astronomers are very, very happy to see this. And at first, they detected neutrinos coming out of this supernova. At that time, the Earth's neutrino labs were operating 24 hours. And the three neutrino labs detected neutrinos uh, coming from the, this supernova. So it was a very, very uh, exciting uh, moment. Okay, I'll finish my lecture here.